What was Jennifer Holloway like as a little girl? <laughs> Rambunctious, tomboy, daddy's girl, um, but at the same time would you know dress up on Sunday, put the bow in my hair, and go to church with mom. So I, ha I grew up very well rounded. Uh, my next door neighbor, I'll tell you who really made a difference in my life. Um, my next door neighbor, when I was six, retired with her husband from New Jersey. So here she is, 65, 68 years old, moves down to this small little mountain town. And she became my best friend. And she taught me so much. And she taught me about the quality of life and giving back to others. And so she really made a difference. So she, my best friend, so who am I? I am a product of, of growing up in a small town where my best friend was 50 some years older than I was. And she, I think, taught, wanted to teach me everything she had learned but the good in life. So I think it's so important to listen to older people. Absolutely. You know, they have so much they want to teach you. It's and I feel, like, yes. yeah, yes. I feel like I'm wise in my years and yes. I know so much because I've been taught so much so I want to share with so many yes. women. Can we say her name or her? Oh sure, Jean Drummond. Oh goodness, yes. She's passed since then. But um, she, this is a woman who you have to understand who grew up um, very, very poor. Um, but she knew she could make a difference in life. And, life. and that was something she told me. You know, live your life and then settle down a little and have kids. You know, but get out there and fulfill your dream. And she, she really instilled that in me. And that's it's what makes me cry because my hometown is me. Yes. And it was hard to leave. But I knew I had to because I had to live my dream yes. before I settled. Otherwise, I would be very unsettled. Right. And she taught me how to be a settled soul. But Jennifer Holloway is a little girl. Did she... She get dirty. She get into Every trouble. Every day. Every day. As a matter of fact, I learned a lot about um, Southern living. Um, you know, building houses with my dad. I would go with. My, I was my dad's. You know, was little girl with little tomboy, and I would. He, again, he was in construction, so oh, I was on yeah. dozers and backhoes and pans and you know bucket trucks and all that and, and getting in red clay dirt every day and that red clay does not oh, it does come not out come on. Uh -huh. <laughs> so um anyway back to the, my mom five o'clock every day um she would cook dinner for a family of five and it would take her a while to get it all together and she gave me two choices i could either be on the couch watching tv the news which we had one station that gave us news at five o'clock and that was monica kaufman out of atlanta oh, I know who she of is. course you do <laughs> and uh or i could be reading a book but I had to be learn. She wanted me to learn during that time. You know, I would learn the world when I would go out and play and go with my dad and go with Aunt Jean. But to learn, you know, to read and to learn what was going on in the outside world was important. Again, we're two hours north of Atlanta, so there wasn't a lot of news happening. My little small town. My mom knew I was sheltered, so I think it was her way of opening me up to the world. So sometimes I would read. A lot of times I would watch the news, and I just became so intrigued with Monica that I knew that's what I wanted to do. You know, she just is an open heart giving person, but besides all that, she's very good on the air. She was calm, her demeanor was there, and I just always wanted to emulate her. So my youth growing up in that, in that small town and seeing stars be down-to-earth people made me realize that she was the same way. And I maybe was around her physically three to five minutes in the same room with her, but it changed my life forever. Tell me about uh, Miss Georgia. <laughs> How did that come I was not the prettiest. I was not the skinniest. I had probably the worst bathing suit. My evening gown was at least four inches too short. But you know what? I did pageants because two reasons. One, it got me on stage, and I just loved being on a microphone. And two, scholarship money. I paid a tremendous amount of my college by, and I was always first runner-up. Well, if you don't win them all, then you can be first runner-up of them all, or second, or third, and you're still getting money, but you can keep doing them. So I was never the cutest, the prettiest, like a little overweight, a little chunky, I, I, but it was fine for me. And in the interviews, are you kidding? I would sit down, and I'd win that interview every single time. I wouldn't win on stage, but, you know, I did okay, but it was enough to get me runner-up. I'll tell you why I won. And I wish I should have my mom send a picture to show you the girls. Everybody expected this one girl to win. She had been in all the pageants and she had just, you know, had the right gown and the right everything and had the poise and the figure and everything. It was a perfect Miss America type package. And everybody thought she was a she would. Well, it all came down to the top five. And in this particular competition, they said they were, well, the, it was not, they were, 
they were going to make their decision on one thing, and that was the on-stage question. So okay. that's what it all boiled down to. Just like with Miss California and her whole ramblings, you know, it all came down to that. Okay, that was my moment. So we all had the same question, and the question was, give me a 30-second commercial on the state of Georgia. Sure. No problem. Well, for some people to think, oh my God, 30 seconds, what do I write, what do I say? Well, it just flowed out of me. And I, I won on stage because of my answer. But I, I controlled my audience with my voice, with my persona, and I grabbed them and I got their attention. And with your enthusiasm. And with my enthusiasm. That's and the thing I see it in It blew you. everybody yes. away. And that girl was so upset she didn't win. And I felt a little bad for her, but, but you knew. Because when the, you know, and listen, this tells you how much I was not going to win. My parents weren't there. Oh, I never no. invited them. They'd be like, what are you doing this weekend? I'm staying in Atlanta because I've got a pageant on Saturday or whatever. I'm like, you want us to come down? No, it's a two and a half hour drive. No. No, they and weren't you there. Won. I won. <laughs> what I still get for something like that. Uh, like you'd win $800 or $1,000, $500 even. But for me, that helped my parents so much. I mean, listen, they're hardworking people. We're not wealthy in money. We're wealthy in giving. We're wealthy in, in my mom would take me to do Meals on Wheels. We would deliver meals to people who are shut-ins, but you have to understand, in a small town this small, back in the seven, late 70s, even in the 80s, there was one family who didn't have electricity. And there were two children who lived there. And my mom would always say, Jen, that could easily be you. You never know. What if we lost everything? What if we didn't have electricity? You know, what if Daddy got hurt in an accident? You know, she always put it into perspective. She, my dad, as I told you, was a member of the Lions, is a member of the Lions Club, and they're such a charitable organization. So I learned through them, giving back is so important. It would snow, you know, we get a six, eight inches of snow. My dad could get out in this, you know, big old piece of equipment, and my mom would cook meals, and we take them to the neighbors because they couldn't get out to get food, you know, for a shut-in for a couple of days. I learned the value of giving back. 